In this video, we're going to be talking about graphing quadratics. In our last form, we're going to see this form is called intercept form. The reason it's called intercept form is because the form gives us the x intercepts. Here's what the form looks like in a generic version. Alright, so oftentimes when we're solving quadratics, uh, we need to try and factor them to solve them. And when we factor a quadratic equation, we get this form. And we're going to talk about this form a lot more um, when we actually factor quadratics to solve them. Right now we're just graphing them. So this is going to lead us into factoring. If we had factored and we see our quadratic in this form, here's what each thing tells us. Again, A is going to tell us whether the quadratic opens up like, an, uh, like a cup or down like an umbrella. If it's positive, it opens up. If it's negative, it opens down. Um, these x's right here, these are really our x-intercepts. And they're always going to be the opposite of whatever p is and the opposite of whatever q is. And they're always going to be the x values and the y value for an x-intercept, remember, the y value is always going to be 0 because it's on the x-axis. The x-axis is at y equals 0. So that value is always going to be 0. x is going to be the opposite of whatever it is here and the opposite of whatever q is over here. So let's do some examples here, see if it makes sense. So the first one x plus 1 times the quantity x plus 2. So a right here is implied that it's just 1. So a is greater than 0, it's positive. We're going to have our parabola open up and it's going to cross the x-axis at these two spots. Again, x is always the opposite of whatever this value is, whatever p is. p is positive 1 so that x-intercept is going to be negative 1, and the y-value is going to be 0. So at negative 1, 0, our parabola is going to cross the x-axis. And it's also, on the other side, the other arm is going to cross at the opposite of positive 2 here. So negative 2, 0. So at negative 2, 0. So we've got a pretty skinny parabola here. The vertex is the trickier thing in this form. The vertex, the x value of the vertex is always going to be right in the middle of whatever the two x-intercepts is. So right here in the middle, somewhere up the y-axis is going to be um, our vertex. So the x is going to be negative one and a half. So if we plug in negative 1.5 into this equation, then we should get y. Um, that's going to be pretty difficult. Um, we could do it. I would rather do an xy table and use values that are very easy to solve and hopefully we'll get the form out of that. So we could plug in negative 1.5 into x. We get, oh, let's just do it anyways. We get negative a half there and we get positive a half here one-half times one-half is a quarter but it's negative so y equals negative a quarter here or negative 0.25 so if we find negative 0.25 it's right I don't know somewhere in there there's our vertex so it's gonna open up in this direction let's try and figure out a couple more points here Again, plugging in a decimal value makes it really hard to solve. I would rather use x values that are easier to solve. So let's try and figure out an easy one to solve here. Let's use, uh, we want either to the left or right of the vertex. Let's use 0. 
0 on the x seems like pretty easy to solve. If I plug in 0 for x, I get 1 here. I get 2 here. 1 times 2 is 2. So if x is 0, y is 2. And it's still symmetrical on the other side. So if I were to plug in negative 3, I would get the same. And now we have enough points to give us a good shape of that parabola. All right, again, the x-intercepts, these two points where the parabola crosses the x-axis are pretty important uh, coordinates or points. They allow us to solve quadratic word problems or real-life situations involving quadratics. Um, and the vertex is also important, so we got all three there. Let's do another example. See if our vertex is a little easier to spot in this next one. But again, the vertex in intercept form is just naturally kind of difficult. It's just a harder form to work with. But the x-intercepts are really easy to solve, and sometimes that's all you need when you are solving a quadratic equation. Solving a quadratic oftentimes just means finding the x-intercepts. So we've got enough room here, x plus 4, and then x minus 3, that's what that says over there. So a is negative, we know it's going to open down. And we know our x-intercepts are going to be the opposite of what these two values are. So again, we're going to have two of them, hopefully. We'll talk about what it means to have 1 or 0 when we get into factor. Um, but right now, the opposite of positive 4 is negative 4. And it's always going to be 0 for the y. And over here, this is negative 3, so the opposite value is going to be positive 3. And if you want more explanation for why we're choosing that, basically we want y to equal 0. Well, in order to make y equal 0, this entire side, or this whole expression over on the right side, has to equal 0. The only way to do that is to get something in these parentheses to equal 0. So if we just add opposites, we always get 0, right? So that's why adding the opposite here and these coordinates right here work. We want y to be 0 in order to make y 0. We want these whole things to equal 0. And we do that by using the opposite of whatever is in our parentheses. So negative 4, 0 is one x-intercept. 3, 0 is another one. Um, and we know it's going to open down, so it's going to look something like this. Our vertex is going to be up here somewhere. And the uh, line of symmetry is going to be right in the middle of these two points. So right in the middle of negative three and po or negative four and positive three. Well, let's count. Let's see. One, two, three. One, two, three. So it's going to be right here. Again, a decimal value. So again, the the vertex is a little difficult to get to. We might be able to do it though. I would rather use the x y table it's just much easier if we had a calculator we could do it using decimals pretty easy but no need to use a calculator alright so easier values here let's see if I use negative 3 what would happen so negative 3 here negative 3 plus 4 is a positive 1 uh, negative 3 here would give us a negative 6 and we're still multiplying by negative 2. If we multiply this all together, we get y. And again, we use it in negative 3 there. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 6 is positive 12. So it's way up there. Um, okay, let's try negative 2. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. And negative 2 right there there would give us negative 5 and that is 20 so we're getting way up there the vertex is probably off the graph here let's see if we can get anything that's even remotely I don't think so the next one over and it's just gonna go higher from there I mean it's just a huge parabola here opening down something like that but again we're talking about intercept form and really what's important right here are the x-intercepts. Okay, so let's try one more here. So 
similar to the first one we did. But now out here in front is an implied negative 1. So A is negative, that means we're going to open down. Um, and our x-intercepts are going to be wherever y equals 0. So in order to make this entire thing equal 0, we can either set it to be the opposite of positive 3, negative 3, which would cancel everything make it 0, or use the opposite of negative 4, positive 4. That would make the entire thing equal 0, too. So at negative 3, 0, and positive 4, 0, again, it's going to be right there. Right in the middle of those two points is going to be our line of symmetry. And the vertex is going to be somewhere up here. Let's see if we can find it. Again, let's use values that are easy to solve. Let's try a negative 2. That's not too bad. Negative 2 plus 3 would give us positive 1. I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1 at the end there. And negative 2 minus 4 gives us a negative 6. So that would make this entire thing equal positive 6. So, so far we're still on the graph. And again, it's symmetrical. So we know that point's going to exist right there. Let's try 0. Let's see if we can get somewhere close to that vertex there. Uh, that would be 3 times negative 4 and the opposite of that, that negative 1's got to be multiplied as well. So we get positive 12. So again, the vertex is slightly off the graph, but it's pretty close up there. And we got our x-intercepts. So we're y equals 0. It's going to be a negative 3 or positive 4 vertex is way up there. It's going to be positive, somewhere around positive 12, 13, maybe even 14. Somewhere up there. So again, this form is just a, a good segue into factoring. If we factor something that, that was in standard form to begin with, and we factored it, we would get something that looks like this. And then we would easily be able to tell what the x-intercepts are. And sometimes, that's really what the question is asking. To solve a quadratic, it just wants to know these values right here and we'll talk about that more when we get into factoring quadratics which is coming up next uh, just a quick review I guess before we close we had three forms uh, we had standard form and we had uh, vertex form and now we have intercept form so three different forms to graph in um, in each different form uh, helps us solve something slightly easier than in another form. So each has its benefits, but also each form kind of has its faults. Um, some things are a little harder in different forms. So there's the, uh, the good and the bad of each form. Alright, on to factoring next.